Good evening, everyone. Call to order and a salute to the flag, Ms. LaBelle Pierce, if you would lead us in a salute to the flag, please. Yeah, I pledge allegiance, pledge allegiance to the flag, flag of the United States, United States of America, America and, to, and the Republic, to the Republic for which it stands, stands one, one nation under, under God indivisible. with liberty and justice for all. Liberty and justice for all. Mm. All right. Um, school, school committee chair report. I have nothing to report at this time. Resource committee, committee, Mr. Stevens. Nothing at this time. Thank you. Any questions, comments? Hearing none, school building needs. Mr. Nothing Stevens. at this time. Thank you. Any questions or comments? Seeing none, policy committee, Mr. Horgan. Yes, so we met last Thursday. We, our final agenda had five items. Um, we went over policy 5117, the McKinney-Vento Homeless Education Assistance Act policy, quite a mouthful. That policy got, or that act rather, got updated in 2018. So there was some language that we needed to add to our policy to reflect that update. Um, that got moved to a first reading. We'll have a second reading, our next meeting, and then we'll bring it to a final approval to this committee very soon. Uh, student feedback survey that will be tabled. We'll, that got tabled. We'll have that uh, brought back up at our next meeting. Same thing with the school choice policy. Uh, we had a thorough discussion over the digital bill of rights and different policies uh, that we have on the books regarding uh, information, data, um, internet, mobile devices, um, really just trying to make sure we have a thorough understanding and a very modern policy for uh, that entire sphere of policy. So that will be a continuing discussion uh, and that will be continuing for our next meeting. And then finally, the public comment policy. I believe that that got recommended to our subcommittee from this general committee um, to reduce the public comment time from five minutes to two minutes, I believe. We went through a discussion um, and I think that needs to be continued because I think it turned out that we didn't have, we weren't positive that we had the right policy in front of us. Um, so that will be a continued conversation. Um, was, that, was that the, I thought, I believe it was supposed to be three minutes, was it? Five mm -hmm. to three? Five to three. I thought it was supposed to be three. Yeah. I mean, that's fine. You, you know. Uh, yeah. Okay. Go ahead. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. And that was pretty much it. Thank you. Any questions or comments or concerns? All right. Seeing none, Student Support Subcommittee, Ms. LaBelle Pierce. There's nothing new to report. Any questions or comments? Thank, thank you, Ms. LaBelle Pierce. Uh, no personal subcommittee, personnel subcommittee needed, nothing to say there. Executive committee, nothing as well. Do we have a student um, representative tonight? Yes, we do, Mr. Mayor. We do, okay. If you're ready, we'll proceed to that. Please. Stand by, and here we go. Hi. <clears throat> Not hearing her. Yeah, I don't have volume. Nathan. Nathan. Yeah, I'm not sure what's happening. Uh, we'll have to come back to that. Okay. Uh, what should we want to move on? I will want approval of the minutes from the previous school committee meeting of April 27th, 2020. Motion, Aaron, we approve them. Second. Motion made to approve. Do I hear a second? Second. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed is unanimous. Thank you. No, no need at this time for executive session. Any, anyone wishing to uh, avail themselves of the communication section? No, no need at this time for executive session. Any, anyone wishing to uh, 
avail themselves of the communication section we don't need it this time for executive session anyone wishing to uh, avail themselves of the communication section we're having a technical difficulty here okay anyone wishing to make a public comment uh superintendent Joklo, do we have anyone uh we do not have any that i'm aware of thank you moving on to superintendent's report mr Joklo. thank you mr chair first i want to start off with a recognition for our teachers it is teacher appreciation week i want to thank our teaching staff for their agility resilience and dedication to our stu students during a historic period which none of us could have anticipated I'm proud of our rapid transition to our remote learning model and, and engagement of our students. This transition has impacted all our lives and I'm impressed with how our teachers have adapted our daily routines to help our students learn. Also, I just want to reemphasize uh, to members of the community to complete the 2020 census. It's very important as it will help dictate how much federal funding um, Fitchburg, North Central Mass and Massachusetts will receive for the next decade. So again, please complete the census. Okay, tonight we have um, a brief uh, agenda. I first want to uh, start off with uh, Adam Renda, our Chief Intervention and Innovation Officer. Uh, we've begun interviewing uh, and doing surveys of uh, our staff. Uh, we plan to conduct uh, additional interviews with our students and our parents to try to get feedback on how we can improve uh, this remote learning model and in increase student engagement. So with that, I'll turn it over to Mr. Renda. Uh, just one minute. Okay, so as the superintendent mentioned, um, we are constantly trying to collect information to improve how we're doing this new normal. Um, so one of the first things that um, we did was interview, uh, excuse me, survey parents. Um, this was the uh, one of the first surveys that we're sending out to teachers to get some information on how to get students more engaged, but also to inform our student and parent survey, which will be released this week. So the purpose of this is to get, gain insights from our teachers so we can plan for tomorrow uh, in the future of education in Pittsburgh. Uh, we've had 297 teachers out of 460 respond. That's a 65% uh, uh, of them actually responded to a survey. That's, that's actually a, a tremendous amount of uh, people responding to a survey. Um, we, we look to gain some insight on improving communication. Uh, this is what the results said. Um, what assignments students are completing and informing students uh, and parents survey, which will be released hopefully this week. Um, so this is a, a brief summary of the results of the teacher survey. So uh, just for uh, purposes of this, one uh, is not good results and five is um, good results uh, on the scale that we use. So we asked teachers to please rate their stress level during um, this time. Um, and not too surprised, uh, teachers are pretty stressed, but you know, at 31% or 92 teachers rating it a three, um, which is, you know, kind of a mid range, almost a normal amount of stress. And, and we had 13.2% uh, um, or 39 teachers saying they weren't very stressed at all. Um, so not surprising at all. And we, we had a follow-up question asking teachers what they were doing uh, to relieve stress and for some suggestions uh, that we could share with other teachers. Um, all of these responses were on, on this. Um, I was expecting a, a huge variety of responses from this, but physical activity, getting outside, listening to music, meditation, yoga, were all on that list. Um, not surprising, and we're glad they're participating in that. We asked about how, the, how clear the communication from the school to, to the teachers was. Um, and to be honest, I was expecting to get zapped on this. I, I thought um, uh, typically when you, whenever you ask uh, an issue about communication, um, people want more of it. But really, uh, the teachers were uh, in, in every building uh, satisfied with 
how the school principals of the school leadership is communicating with them, with really only eight respondents um, saying that it was not clear at all. Uh, the majority, and I need to, uh, the majority, uh, well over 70% were at a four or five um, saying it was very clear. We asked the same question, but we asked how they felt about the communication from the district. Again, uh, I was expecting uh, to get zapped on this, but again, pretty pretty clear. Um, you know, if you if you factor in the three, uh, we are well into eighty over eighty percent of the teachers thinking that the communication has been clear. However, there were comments about how we asked what we could improve. Um, and there were, like I said, a wide variety of responses, but really I think what teachers are, are looking for um, is a structure and routine in regards to communication. They're looking for um, getting the, the information kind of like the same time every week uh, and, and in the same format. So we, we have been, um, and the superintendent said a great job of getting a lot of information out there. I think we need to sit down and plan how we can get this out kind of the same way um, and the same time every week as best we can. We asked our teachers what their biggest concern for their students was. Uh, there were a variety of responses, but overwhelmingly teachers are worried about the social emotional well-being, engagement in work, the students' mental health, their resources at home, and the gap that this is going to create. In our next steps, we will um, distribute the survey to parents and students in hopes of increasing engagement. We're gonna streamline communication and technical skills. Um, we are beginning now to be proactive in our approach to what the new normal is. So we need to shape what education is gonna look like in Fitchburg before it is done for us. And um, as Bob likes to say, we just need to get better every day. Questions? Uh, Adam, I have a question. I, I've had this very briefly with um, Mr. Thompson and the superintendent. How? How? I mean, if if the stress, if the stress level is at any degree with teachers, what what are they basing that on? The fact that they uh, that they're remotely teaching. Uh, I. I think that's part of it, Mayor. I think that the hardest thing for our teachers, and, and this is something I, I've struggled with too, is we are so involved in the day-to-day -day well-being of our students that we lost that control. We lost the control of being able to, to pop into a classroom and check in on them. Yeah. We lost the ability to call a parent in for a meeting. Um, yeah. if we, just, we just don't know. Um, and you know, a lot of our families rely on the schools a lot, uh, to, a, to a, um, a, pr a fairly serious degree. Uh, and we're, we're used to being there for them. We're used to, to providing whatever the need is uh, as best we can. And, and, and with these circumstances, that's, that's hard to do. Our teachers care about our students a tremendous amount and what they do on a daily basis for their um, social and emotional well-being um, is tremendous. And I think it's just, they feel powerless when it comes to that. It's a frustration level. Yeah. It is. And, you know, we're doing the best we can. We have clinical interventionists and school counselors reaching out and, and trying to provide these services to families as best we can. But that face-to-face -face connection is so important, uh, especially for our, our, our most vulnerable students. Um, I'm trying to remember the memorandum of understanding. Like, uh, so um, are teachers reporting to um, guidance or principals uh, every week about who's completed their work, right? So um, I, I can tell you just on my end, the level of stress is high just because, you know, you might have staggered work, right? When you, when you taught in the classroom and instead, you know, you're looking at like a hundred and something number of um, assignments that are coming in each week to kind of keep track of who's doing the work and who's not. So I mean, I know that you're, maybe you could explain that again, like how kids are getting credit for the fourth quarter or how different schools have established the protocol to like report on um, assignments. Yeah, so I'll, I'll, st I'll start answering that and then I'm gonna defer to John for the, for the grading. 
Um, but um, yes, everyone is keeping track of students that are engaged and, and who are not and not engaged. The guidelines recently changed uh, when the state released um, the new guidelines with the new power standards. Um, but we are trying to keep track and we are trying to engage students who, who aren't. So, um, we, um, so what we're doing is when students aren't engaged is those names are being forwarded to school administration and then school administration, school counselors, and um, sometimes school clerks are reaching out, trying to get connections with the families and either set up a, virt a, a virtual meeting or getting some type of, of confirmation that the student is going to engage in when. Um, and for the most part, we're having some luck with that. And then there are some families who we simply can't engage with at all. And, and, and so part of that could be they, they, during this, they may have moved. They may have moved in with family, um, somewhere else and they're just they're not answering there's, there's no cell number they're not answering a home phone but um, we have utilized the school resource officer to do some wellness checks for some of those cases where we haven't um, been able to get in touch with in most cases we have at least been able to get a phone call with almost 100 percent of our students um, but that's a difference there's a difference between talking to them on the phone and getting them to to participate in the school work right and, and um you know, like everyone else, which we are struggling with that with, with some students. We are not at 100%. John, could you answer that yep. about the grading? Thank you. Yeah, so for we're looking at using credit, no, no credit, Gene, for grading purposes for the middle and high school. Um, some of the things we're using the judge at is whether kids are completing assignments or not, um, whether or not they are engaging um, in uh, the communication with the teacher, or communicating um, you know, on assignments with partners. Um, it, it's, very, it's very broad. So if you look at what we're doing, is we're, we're truly giving kids the benefit um, of their situation um, at this time. Um, we're looking, like I said, at assignments, number of times they're able to communicate with the teacher, and the engagement level during this time. Um, so we're really truly basing it on whether kids are highly engaged or just engaging minimum to get credit. And then kids who pretty much are disappeared, meaning no communication at all with teachers during this time, um, would be getting no credit, um, which we're hoping that's few and none. Uh, Jeremy, if you want to add on to anything um, that I just said, we're hoping that you know the majority of kids will get some credit during this time. Um, but it, we're not looking at, um, you know, grading the assignments. We're giving them feedback, um, but not giving them traditional letter grades. Um, that being said, um, and Mr. Jokola, if I'm speaking out of turn, please correct me. Um, today we got some information that the state will be uh, putting some more guidance out on grading. Um, that's news to me. I thought that it was going to be a um, local decision. Um, and we could use credit or no credit, but it looks like they'll be giving a little bit more guidance in the next week. So we'll be possibly looking at that and maybe tweaking um, our system based on the new guidance that the state puts out. Yeah, to clarify, the, the decision on grading is a local decision, and um, we have been following the, the previous guidance and you know, look, comparing ourselves to what other districts are doing and our practices are aligned with, you know, the practices of many, you know, districts, how they're grading, students at different grade levels. Um, yeah, today the commissioner threw out some new information um, in a speech to uh, superintendents across the state. Uh, there will be additional guidance uh, in a number of areas coming out over the next couple of weeks. Um, one about the competency determination for uh, graduating seniors. Um, another one on, again, graduation is another uh, local decision. And even today, the commissioner talked about uh, potentially having more information available um, on May 18th for districts to make any plans for May or June. Um, so, I think I think the bottom line in, in some of these areas, um, it's a very fluid uh, dynamic in terms of uh, what has been coming from the state and what continues to come down from the state. And the commissioner in instances like grading and graduation dates, these are local decisions ultimately.
Are there any other questions of Adam's survey? This is this is probably you know one of the from a staff survey perspective. I think the the highest um, engagement we've ever had, and uh, this is the first of a few surveys uh, that we plan to uh, complete to get additional feedback. Um, this remote learning, as I mentioned when I was talking about teacher appreciation. Uh, was really thrust upon everybody, teachers, students, families, uh, with little to almost no advance warning. So, um, you know, the teachers in Fitchburg and across the state and across the country are learning, adapting, and they're trying to do it better every day. And we just want to use these surveys as a, as a mechanism to try to help us improve our professional practice. Could I ask one more question? I'm sorry, Adam. Um, were you, I mean, not that it was presented to us, nor does it need to be presented to us, but were you able in that survey to figure out like grade level of teachers and which schools they were responding from? Yeah, so we, yes, we, we certainly can tell which, which school they're from. And we did a range for grades because we really wanted people to feel safe. So we did pre-K to one, uh, four, uh, five to eight and then then nine to twelve so you might have some actionable data there to like address concerns of particular grades right yeah we certainly do we can tell um from which grade level which school which assignments are getting done uh, yeah it, it's it, you, there's there's plenty of data to sift through to, to, yeah. to, to figure things out yeah Great. Okay, if there's no further questions, let's uh, move on to uh, Fitchburg High School and graduation update. I'm going to try to have uh, Alexis Curry of Goodrich join us uh, in momentarily. So um, Jeremy, if you can get started and um, then if you wanna just continue with the update on the uh, Innovation Pathways grant as well. Absolutely, so I know I think that the student report is ready to go now and I'm always glad to have the students go in front of me. So Nate, I want to take it away with Caden take two. Hello again, this is Caden, one of the student reps for the school committee. Online work remains focused on the Massachusetts learning standards and is still required for all of this week. I received all my assignments for the week this morning and the workload is a lot heavier this time around given that AP exams are next week. FHS has its first vocational technical program that is officially improved until 2025. Students who have interest in this advanced manufacturing program should review the courses in the 2020-2021 program of studies. FHS is also excited to introduce a new educator early college dual enrollment pathway to go along with the healthcare and liberal arts pathways. As an early college dual enrollment pathway provides our students with 12 college credits at minimum before graduating high school. These courses are completely free, which equals at least four college classes, which at MWCC would cost $3,000 and Fitchburg State $4,800. A senior car parade took place for the graduating class to see FHS staff on May 2nd at 5 p.m. while maintaining social distancing, of course. Thank you to Mr. Walker and Ms. Kelly for coordinating and to so many who helped me make the senior car parade a success. You can check social media sites for pictures and videos as both FATV and Mr. Link did a tremendous job of capturing this event. The first full week of May is traditionally Teacher Appreciation Week across the United States. During this week, students, parents, administrators, and others can take an opportunity to recognize those amazing teachers who work so hard to have a positive impact on the lives of all students. Never before has the power and influence of teachers been so obvious than right now. A high school teacher often has over 100 students assigned to them and still our faculty at FHS makes unbelievable efforts to get to know every student and support their needs. I wanna say thank you to all of our great teachers and I include our administrators like Mr. DiGeronimo, Ms. Jarrett, Ms. Scott, Mr. Antossi and Mr. Soto, as well as our guidance counselors, nurses, and any educator or faculty member in the Fitchburg Public School System for their dedication, hard work, unwavering care for their students, and the spirit that they bring to all of our schools. 
I think passing along a thank you to our teachers and educators in whatever way we can will go a long way, especially at a time like now. And finally, a huge thank you to all of you guys for continually finding ways to discuss and improve Fitchburg Public Schools despite the craziness that is going on right now. I hope everyone and their families are safe and healthy, and I hope to meet again soon. Thank you. Thank you, Katie. So that's why I like to have her go first. <laughs> but I will jump in now and begin with update on graduation. So, um, yeah, before I even do that, I, you know, I would also say thank you to the teachers uh, for the work they do. And it's, it's impressive and amazing in so many levels. And um, I just want to say thank you to everybody and that not just in Fitchburg, but certainly Fitchburg Public Schools. So with respect to the graduation survey, we, we, um, we sent out a survey to the class of 2020 members and their parents uh, last week to collect some information about a couple of different options that we could uh, potentially do for graduation given you know, the circumstances that we're all living with within. We had excellent response rate uh, with over 80% of our students responding to the survey and nearly 50% of parents. So, so we we're excited by that. And you can see the breakdown uh, of student to parent ratio on the survey results. What was real super clear is that both parents and students uh, wanted to, to want to delay the graduation commencement from May 29th to a, to a later date. I think with the hopes that we'd be able to do a more traditional uh, graduation ceremony. So, so we will do that. Uh, I, I sent an email update probably about an hour or two ago to class of 2020 members and their parents with, with that information that, that uh, the results are in and it's super clear that you want to delay and we will honor that because it's, you know, as I say to students all the time, it's not my education, it's yours. And in this case, it's not my graduation, it's yours. So for the class of 2020, you know, which has lived through, um, if I hear the word unprecedented one more time, and I'm gonna use it in this case, unprecedented times, um, you know, then we're gonna try to make it the best that we possibly can. So so you can kind of see some of the breakdown of the voting. And interestingly, I think just with the number of votes that we, we did receive, both parents and students at 60%, just about for parents and on, closing in on 65% of students, you know, voted for uh, delay graduation. And we had very little support for the virtual graduation, which would be doing graduation completely, um, you know, digitally through video and, and that type of thing. And there are some schools, I think, that are looking at that. But um, what some others are doing is sort of a modified live virtual. And, and that received some, some, some support, but certainly not as much as, as pushing it out. So next steps for us, you know, clearly we do have to keep an eye on on the state and what the re what the recommendations are um, in in specific regulations. I know Superintendent Jokel mentioned uh, Commissioner Riley's updates too. That that was as recent as as I think this morning. You know, it is a um, ongoing, changing um, kind of situation. So we'll take take close watch on that certainly and whatever recommendations come from that reopening advisory board uh, we are planning to meet with class officers the advisors we met today the advisors myself and mr d um but we'll meet with the class officers on wednesday and uh review a couple of different options in terms of dates and also you know what we would like to try to do um, again the goal would be i think with delay is to do as close to a traditional ceremony as possible so we probably will choose two dates um, because if we pick one that looks like we won't be able to do a traditional one, then we'd have a backup date. So we'll plan to get those out to, to our community uh, ASAP because we know that people have plans that they need to coordinate around. Um, and again, we'll just be providing updates to the community uh, ongoing, you know, with respect to the communication part that um, Mr. Renda talked about, certainly. 
know, we try to, to do a good job with that, but, you know, don't always, I think, and, and certainly want to do as well as possible. So we'll communicate frequently and, and, and try to consider the structures around that as well as that's good feedback too. But we definitely want to capture the spirit of the class and, and have the best possible graduation commencement that we can. Um, I also want to do a quick just thank you. So we do have our signs in that we will be distributing to all members of the class of 2020. We have 240 members of the class of 2020. And, um, you know, this, I think you've seen maybe this in other communities. In our community, these have been completely paid for by members of the community. And I don't know, I know for a fact that's not the case um, in all. So I just want to thank Rep Representative Stephen Hay and his family. I know he, he was instrumental in a lot of this. And, and there's a list of uh, the donors that, that helped make this particular sign a possibility. And we, we plan to start distributing these as soon as tomorrow. And I can think he's, I think you can see one is already launched right into a, a yard already. So I just want to thank those, those folks on the, on the slide for their generosity and their red rate of spirit. And it really is uh, appreciated. And we're excited to get these out to our kids so you can start to see these around the city of Fitchburg. Um, so that's that's the quick update on graduation, um, and we'll come back to it with questions, certainly. I do want to update on innovation career pathways. Uh, Caden did mention that, and, and so did uh, Superintendent Jokola, but we did receive official designation for an innovation career pathway, uh, which will be valid for five years, uh, along with 18 other schools. We you know, we went through about a two-year pro process of applying for an advanced manufacturing pathway at Fitchburg High. Uh, it'd be a six-credit pathway with a 100-hour internship. I talked a little bit about that a couple of weeks ago, um, but we're, you know, just thrilled that the, the governor's administration recognized the validity of our program and how important that will be to the North Central Mass area, specifically Fitchburg. And, and you know, we're glad to have um, already four manufacturing partners right here in, in the city. So again, I think just to, to capture it, there are only 42 high schools in Mass that have, have one. Some have multiple, like the Worcester Public Schools, being a larger district with, with a number of high schools, have, have a few more. But we, we're excited to start ours, you know, and it really is our first vocational technical type of program that Fitchburg High is going to be, be able to offer. And you know, it's 4,000 students is not a lot of students when you consider this about 75,000 per every single grade level in, in, in the Massachusetts public schools. But we're going to be excited to, to be doing it with 100 of ours. And that's the, the target for our program. And, um, you know, we're really looking forward to launching this. So I'll just show quickly again for everybody out there. Uh, who's observing this and, and watching this. And, and, you know, our information is all posted to the Fitchburg High School and Fitchburg Public Schools websites, specifically on the Fitchburg High website main page. The application is right there. We are accepting applications. It's a very simple process. It's very inclusive and open. Um, so, you know, again, take advantage of this because we really feel this is going to give many of our students uh, a huge leg up on on their development and, and preparation for that next step in, in career or college. So glad to take questions now, and then we'll stop sharing, come back to the meeting. I have a question, Jeremy. Um, so for the um, online registration for next year's classes, are you, for a pathway program, um, would it mostly be juniors who would have the option to start taking those? Because, I, and I ask that because um, like a certain amount of recommended, recommended courses are pushed out to kids. Sure. Uh, and like I just noticed for like the sophomore menu, there's no talk about that. Like, I don't know unless they're aiming it at a different audience or something, but I was just curious, like, how do kids know? Well, yeah, so it's it's definitely, Gene, a, so, so the manufacturing program specifically would be sophomore, junior, senior with freshmen, second semester freshmen, um, getting a lot of information about it. Of course, 
this year has been difficult because we were just ready to start to have class meetings about this and, and do quite a bit of advertising and discussing it and so forth. So we've had to resort to communication virtually and through email and, and so forth. However, um, you know, with specifically with respect to, to the manufacturing, we'd have we look to 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 do 25 or even potentially more students per grade level. And again, picking up second semester freshmen, you know, with a lot of support from guidance and and teachers and, and that type of thing. So if you're saying it's not available, I'll I'll go and check on that, you know, in terms of our X2, you know, course registration. Um, well, I don't know if it's available. I'm just saying I think kids got an email of what their recommended courses should be, right? So is that yes? So I'm just curious. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, I, I so I'm sure it probably is something that's available. I'm just like if you're taking your cue from whatever your guidance counselor sends. Um, like I, I guess my big question is: is there like are you targeting certain kids to say we want you to look at this innovation pathway or? Or is that kind of an open thing? Like, I, I'm just curious. Yeah, so so great question. It is totally open to any student. Um, there would be a combination. You know, the, the communication that we have, uh, you that we've done so far and will continue is is to everybody. To to your point, there'll be there would be targeted communications with guidance counselors, for example, with particular students who've shown an interest, say, you know, they're taking tech ed courses, or maybe they're interested in the STEM, like we were going to do quite a bit with our STEM pathway freshman team, you know, with recruiting in there. Uh, but any, any student is, it's open to any student because, because even with like the early college programs at dual enrollments, and we're excited about the educator pathway one that's starting up this year. The, the innovation career pathway will include not only the sort of industry credentials that would be, you know, something that a person could use in an interview for a manufacturing job, but also dual enrollment credit. So, so we, you know, we envision this as really, you know, across the board, running the gamut of the entire student population for interest, and, and it would be, you know, open to anyone. So I would definitely... Um, uh, you know, we'll, we'll coordinate a little bit on that communication part. Like I said, the, the challenge has just been we had had a structure in place from sort of mid-March to about mid-May to communicate this a lot in person, you know, and, and, and we're just adjusting on the fly like everybody. And it's just, uh, it's unfortunate it's our year year one of implementation with, with this, but We'll we'll make it work and it'll it'll be great regardless. It'll just be maybe a little bit different than exactly what we had planned. Yeah, it must be tough for the incoming ninth grade um, just in organizing that communication to them, right? So has that been successful so far? Have they registered? Yeah, you know it's interesting. We had a, a meeting today about start getting a, a transition. Um, Google Hangout or Zoom meeting um, scheduled for the class of 2024 um, because you know we want to we want to you know I guess connect with the current eighth grade um, in ways that just we haven't been able to, which would be visits down to the middle schools and Jen Scott has done quite a bit of that um, in the fall, but the spring is when you really come back at it pretty hard, you know. So. Um, we will be doing and we I think next week we'll, we'll be doing um, an, an evening event, you know, much like this for any eighth grade parent and student. That'll be an overview of of the programs at the school, things like the advanced manufacturing program, too, for sure. Um, in addition to other things and then Q&A, just I'm sure there'll be a lot of questions about what does it look like? You know, that type of thing, you know, in terms of fall in the high school and, and so forth. And we'll try to answer those to the best of our ability too. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Any other questions? So, Jeremy, I guess I just wanna emphasize one of the things that you mentioned that it's open to anyone. And yes. you know, we're all about here in Fitchburg and at Fitchburg High School is providing access opportunity 
and equity. So again, here's another offering that we that we provide our students. Um, so whether they want to pursue a career pathway or a college pathway, and they have some career skills, that option is available to them. And this is just another uh, feather in our hat um, for all the offerings that we do offer at Pittsburgh High School. So thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Okay. We're going to try to have um, Alexis Curry, principal of Goodrich, uh, join us, but she's um, unable to join us. So I think we'll just. She's move. on. No, I'm oh. on. Oh, you're on. Yeah, yeah. I, I ran on when you sent me the text. I'm like, what? He can't see me. I'm pressing the key. That's okay. It's not really a problem, Bob. Usually I'm, I'm, I'm a little obvious from far away, but okay. <laughs> well, you are obvious, Alexis. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. So, well, Alexis, yes. if you can just go ahead with uh, an update on the Goodrich graduation. Sure. And Sure. Okay. So firstly, I, uh, I just, as I said, came in from a SPED meeting. So if I missed anything or anyone needs anything from me when I'm done, please feel free to ask. But what we've been talking about at Goodrich is we have just begun to um, conduct Google Hangouts with all seniors. We're going in small groups of 10 um, and having half hour meetings with them just to address social emotional learning needs that we've been addressing already. Um, on an ongoing basis, but to specifically speak to questions of graduation, I did not, as I said, hear all of Jeremy's, but I'm sure he probably shared with you similar um, kind of responses from our student, which is that they desperately want a graduation ceremony, um, I think for them of particular importance is crossing the stage. So what we're talking about is not making any promises about exactly when that will be, um, or exactly what it will look like, but we're basically just in the process of reassuring our students that we understand exactly how critically valuable the actual process is for them in the ceremony, so that we do respect that and we are doing our everything in our power not to eliminate that. So that's what we're talking about. Um, most of them are just having a lot of questions about exactly that. When will it look like? What will it look like? Where will it be? And when will it be? And regrettably, we cannot answer those questions for them. I shared an email with in every classroom. I have access to all classrooms and share media um, announcements in there quite frequently. And I shared with them that um, la it was only last week that the governor, or a little before that, that the governor actually said they would not be de devising a plan for graduations, but rather individual superintendents would be doing so. And I let them know that that was announced at the principal's meeting and that um, Superintendent Jokola is working with Jeremy and I to find out exactly what we you know, would like that to look like, what it's reasonable for that to look like and how it will happen. Okay, any questions of um, Principal Curry? Uh, any questions for any, any part of it? Okay, thank you, Alexis. Wait, she's asking me a question, Bob, Ms. Bell, but she's muted. I just double clicked on it, sorry. Um, so Alexis, uh, how's the engagement level at Goodrich? And well, we're, um, I, I mean, this is the certainly not ideal for our students, maybe even more so than others, um, but we're pouring out the outreach. Um, we have established advisories so that each teacher, actually each staff member in the building has only 15 students that they have to monitor. Um, we're calling everyone once weekly. We've delivered posters to every house. We've made videos for all of the kids. Um, we monitor their engagement. We run raffles every week to get them involved. Mm -hmm. And we're just staying on top of them and staying as close as we possibly can. Right now, we are very pleased. We are, we're at 92% engagement. And I want to say that that does not mean they're all caught up in every assignment. However, it's been um, a grueling challenge, and we're very proud of the fact that we now have 92% I, we're in, uh, on. And now we've devised what's called power trackers um, that are actually going to go to the homes of and the workplaces of the 14 students or so that it is that we cannot get on. Um, we have someone from a church going to one of their houses today. So our goal, like everyone's, is 100% engagement. Um, but the kids are really responding to us. They're just very sad. Our kids thrive with the connection and, and being in the building together, but we're doing every bit of that that we can 
you know, do without them being there. Um, I had countless texts and emails uh, of kids saying they cried um, out loud. And one of them said for a half hour, because we deliver these poster boards of encouragement to each house and we go by and just visit. So we're doing everything we can to stay engaged. It's far less than ideal. Um, and we're just like everyone else. We're not perfect at it. We're still learning, but um, teachers are, we started when we closed the school the day of, um, we started engaging right away. And right now what we're doing is we're um, kind of going full fledged on video conferencing because we feel like now we've got them engaged. We've got 92% to sign on. How do we keep them on? So every teacher is doing multiple Google Hangouts every day. And we're just trying to keep every kid that we can seeing our faces and us seeing theirs and hearing our voices and us hearing theirs. Yeah, that's great. That's we're trying. Any, any other questions? No? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Alexis. Thank you all. Okay. So, uh, Craig, you want to bring us home with the uh, summary of the grants? And uh, I had emailed out the correct grant uh, spreadsheet for this evening. I think what had been sent to you in your package was from the April 6th uh, meeting. So you should have the correct grant spreadsheet forwarded to you now. Yep. Thanks, Bob. So we have one donation to be accepted uh, this week. It is from the United Way for 560 meals uh, with an estimated value of $3,000. And that's to be used uh, district-wide to combat hunger. We have three grants to be submitted. One is uh, for FY21 Capital Skills Grant. That's $149,000. And that is at Fitchburg High School, and that's for implementing costs associated with the Advanced Manufacturing Pathways Initiative. The second one is uh, Mass uh, FY21 Massachusetts 21st Century Community Learning High Quality Project Based Learning Curriculum Development Grant. Uh, that's a fifty thousand dollar grant. Um, it is to support high quality. Uh, project-based learning, and we have uh, two schools that have applied $25,000 each for Crocker and for South Street. Um, and the last grant to be submitted is the FY21 McKinney-Vento Homeless Education Grant. That's $20,000, and that's to help uh, provide support to our homeless students. And then lastly, good news, uh, one grant to be accepted. Uh, we were awarded uh, under the um, School Water Improvement Grant, 19 uh, fast fill uh, hydration stations to be used throughout the district. Uh, that's 19 units at an estimated value of $57,000. And that was through the Mass Clean Water Trust. So that was exciting news. That was something that we've been working on um, this year and a, a goal for us for next year to get the hydration stations uh, installed at each one of the schools. Uh, what can you go into a little more deep? What is a hydration station? Is that a bubbler? <laughs> <laughs> so it's it's the modern bubbler. So um, it basically is a it's a filtered um, fast fill bottle filling station uh, that provides uh, extra filtering for lead and contaminates in in the water. Um, and you know we encourage students to bring their own water bottles and, and going into next year will be that much more important to have uh, students drinking from their own water bottles and not visiting the, the communal water fountain. Right, great. Okay. And lastly, we have a, a warrant to be accepted, WG20031 for $1.85 million. What is the pleasure of the, of the committee bundle 20-1290 up through and including 20-1293? Take a motion, we accept. Motion to accept action items 20-2290 up through and including 20-1293. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed, it is unanimous. I'm sorry, where's the second on that vote? I'm sorry. The Where's second? the second? I think it was Mr. Walsh. Yes. Thank yes. you very much. Okay. Uh, don't believe there's a need for an executive session. Do I hear a motion to adjourn? Mr. Mayor. 
yeah. I could just make one comment first. It yeah. kind of goes kind of goes along with graduation. Yeah. Um, the Alumni Association will be meeting Wednesday night, and we are going to be uh, voting for the awards this year. And our awards will be consistent with what we have been given for the last several years. So we've had a good response from the high school seniors. So um, those kids uh, can expect to check in the mail, you know. So great. That's still high school, still alumni association, still working on that. Yeah, alumni association does a great job every year. Thank you, Mr. Stevens. Uh, you know what? Believe it or not, I, I I don't know about you guys, but I miss you all. You know, is that no. kind of weird or what? I mean, is that no? Okay, mm -hmm. I can see that the Garner is practicing distancing from his razor. You got that right, man. It's <laughs> great it's been a while. There, man. I, I, think I, I I miss you more than anyone. Even got you got that. Yeah. You have General Longstreet look from the Civil War. You look at yeah. yeah, I miss all you guys too. <laughs> <laughs> but motion to adjourn. On that note. <laughs> motion to adjourn. So moved. Motion made. Do I hear a second? Second. Second. All in favor. Aye. 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 Adjourn. Thanks, everybody. Well,